or open way. Uh, questions and comments. Question and comment. The Honorable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Public Safety. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. What bothers me in this approach of decriminalization is this persistence in uh, talking only about the final user and thinking that a solution that helps a single person grow a small personal quantity of marijuana fails to recognize the realities of the market. People come in our grade school yards. They're related to criminal gangs and they offer these products to our children. They don't understand the magnitude of the grow-ups in our farmers' fields. They're subject to extortion, phenomenal amounts of money invested in hydroponic uh, greenhouses. So I'd like to hear what the member could uh, say to her constituents to uh, vaunt the advantages of decriminalization. The Honourable Member for Abitibi-Tibiscamingue. I thought I had explained this properly in my speech, but when people who consume regularly can consume what they produce themselves, and I'm sure that would happen in many, many cases with regular users, the criminal market would dry up because it's a question of supply and demand. If people start to produce their own marijuana, a substance where the criminal market breaks down, I think people will stop going to schoolyards. Of course, they may try other substances, but that are not consumed as often by young people. Questions and comments? For Red Deer Mountain View. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I, I uh, do uh, thank the, uh, the member for her speech, and uh, it certainly was interesting, and I know that we'll have a lot of things to talk about when this, uh, uh, when finally the legislation comes. Uh, you know, we're, we're talking about uh, plant physiology and, and how farmers are going to, or how producers are going to have to change things so that they can regulate to find out exactly uh, how much presence of, of uh, effective chemical there's going to be backyard pot growers and uh, people raiding their gardens, all of these other sorts of things are taking place. But if we look at the Colorado experience right now, one of the key things they're looking at is acute marijuana intoxication in children. And uh, the, the key component there is, uh, is people that are putting them, normalizing the use of it and then putting uh, the chemicals into brownies and gummy bears and so on. So a child doesn't know what it is that they might get into. And uh, so by dealing with this normalization, I, I see that we're creating so many other issues. And uh, so I'm just wondering if, uh, if you can talk, if the uh, member could uh, speak somewhat about how you're going to regulate and protect those families and those children that are going to be subject uh, to, uh, to something where all of this is free and normalized. The Honourable Member for Abitibi-Témiscamingue. Thank you. Well, indeed, by decriminalizing immediately, it will allow us to have some flexibility in terms of legalization. We can look at what's happening in Colorado and then predict what some of the negative effects might be. Uh, for example, it, the production of uh, candies and products uh, that might attract the attention of children. So by decriminalizing, uh, we would not be legalizing the product and it wouldn't be in the mass market, but it would be available on a small scale for people who might produce their own, for example, and it would allow us to look at this and look towards a, a time when there might be legislation to legalize it that might be sensible, and indeed it might um, inform us as to what kind of products to limit, like candies that have man marijuana in it. We banned uh, cigarettes with flavors that attracted children. And so it uh, gives us some flexibility. But I think that the prior priority in terms of marijuana is that people not have to deal with these uh, legal aspects and repercussions. And this motion could achieve both goals. Deputy the Honorable Member for Hashalaga. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
If we don't decriminalize marijuana right away, the simple possession thereof, we're talking about many more arrests over the course of the next year and the trials that go along with that. The Department of Justice itself is talking about $4 million a year in cost just for them. Does my colleague have any suggestions as to how this money could be used else in another way, for example, in the, the fight against drug addiction? The Honorable Member for Abitibite Miskamang. Thank you very much. Indeed, these funds could be used immediately and uh, could uh, be taken out of uh, that part of the justice system to be used in the health system to limit the, the use of marijuana, particularly uh, in terms of programs to help people who are drug addicted, because there are people uh, in that situation and they need help to quit. But it could also be used for prevention programs in terms of young people. It could be used for awareness programs um, where specific information on the potential effects on health are uh, given and why it's important to be aware of that and responsible in your choices. All of those funds could be used um, in terms of health rather than in the criminal justice system. I think we would uh, all win from that. The Honourable Parliament Secretary to the Minister of Justice. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank uh, the member from Abitibi to Miskaming for her for her remarks. And I just wanted to ask a couple of questions of clarification, if I may. Um, and my questions come from a report by the Centre of Addiction Mental Health and some of the insight and guidance that they have provided us with through their scientific research and their recommendations for a public health policy framework for the, re the legalization and effective and efficient regulation. Of, of cannabis, and in in that report, they they've said very, very clearly, and, and I would I would seek the, the member from Abitibi to Ms. Kaming's response to this. The decriminalization is a half measure that does nothing to to uh, control the the potency or the quality of marijuana consumed by Canadians. It is it is because it remains prohibited under decriminalization. And in her remarks, I was somewhat confused of whether she was talking about immediate legalization or decriminalization. And of course, decriminalization prohibition remains the rule. But but the law enforcement of pro, uh, on, on prohibition does drive uh, cannabis users away from prevention, risk reduction, and treatment services. And perhaps most importantly, I wanted her response uh, to to CAMH, which is by the way the leading mental health and addiction research facility in Canada. They said that de decriminalization encourages commercialization of cannabis production and distribution without giving the government any additional regulatory t tools. I think this is an opportunity of enormous profit for organized crime. And we, and we have seen and I have seen firsthand the, the ravages of organized crime, the violence and victimization that they perpetuate in our neighborhoods. And so I wanted to ask the member if that's what she intended. The Honourable Member for Abitibiti, Ms. Kameng. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And what I'd like to say clearly is that, yes, decriminalization is not the final step of all of the issues around marijuana. It's clear that it's one step and that we'll continue to move forward. But currently, I'm certain that decriminalization is uh, uh, not as bad as the prohibition that we have now which means that people have um, consequences in terms of criminal records and that we're not able to talk about this intelligently. I am very certain that the approach of decriminalization is much more effective uh, rather than the total banning as we've been doing for so long. We have to continue the work, the serious work that we'll be doing on this issue. One more short question and response, your honourable member for Caribou, Prince George. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I almost uh, I, I want to uh, say that I, I, I thank our honourable member from Scarborough Southwest for his comments because it was exactly where I wanted to go with mine. Uh, I followed uh, quite uh, closely the comments uh, our, our honourable colleague's uh, presentation. I find it farcical that decriminalization will lead for better studying in the impairment of, uh, of drivers and those around. Um, Mr. Speaker, through you, I'd like to ask the, uh, the Honourable Colleague if she's aware of the, the technology that's around for impaired driving and for our police agencies, and as well, through you, Mr. Speaker, if she's aware of the training uh, and the time frame for implementing those new, that new technology to be able to tell 
whether somebody's impaired and the level of impairment uh, through marijuana. Thank you. The Honorable Member for Abitibite Miskameng. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Yes. For example, when you look at the research and information, the problem is that if what I'm doing is illegal, I'm not going to be able to talk about it. So at least if having people able to talk about what they're doing, we're going to have much um, more significant data. But if the activity that they're carrying out is illegal, it's very hard for us to go out and get the data that allows us to have an idea that uh, is more sensible of the limits that need to be established. And that's what I was trying to say, because at least through decriminalization, people will be able to say, I use this much, and we'll have an idea of uh, the impact of their con consuming. Well, Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister.